application deployment with infrastructure deployment. And uh, he's facing a similar concern with ECS where, uh, you know, adding two workflows, one uh, in GitHub Actions for building and deploying the app and the other uh, for app specific infrastructure like ECR, uh, ECR task definitions and so forth. And my, uh, my issue is how do, we, how do we improve this to deal with the various race conditions as such? So yeah, let me talk about this. Uh, those of you who have tuned in before have uh, heard me bring this up a lot. Um, I call it the four layers of infrastructure. It's, uh, it's critical to how we think about things and I'll try and make this a little bit bigger here. The gist of it is these are our four layers of, uh, the, you know, broad strokes of infrastructure. You got your foundational infrastructure, your AWS accounts, your VPCs, your IAM architecture, DNS architecture as such. That is its own layer. That has its own software development life cycle. You don't tear down everything from layer four all the way back up to layer one again. Like you're operating a platform that's online all the time for different teams and different divisions. So then on top of that, you're laying down your platform. That's your e the next layer, your EKS clusters, your e ECS Fargate clusters, uh, backing services required by those things. That's the next thing that happens. That has its own life cycle, also ch changes relatively uh, infrequently. From there, you, you, you roll out your shared services. These are things like maybe Jenkins or your GitHub Action Runners, your Datadog uh, monitoring integration, stuff like that. And finally, you get to your applications, which is the final layer uh, in our paradigm here. Well, you can maybe Sorry. talk about security and stuff. Uh, just, just one new question about this field. Um, you mentioned about layers. That's perfect. So uh, every layer, I suppose, is a Terraform deployment? Possibly. It depends on your tool chain. This is and, more conceptual. Yeah, yeah, but... If it is a, 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 if you have two layers that are two different Terraform, are you going with uh, data? So basically, you are fetching back from the yeah. other, yeah, or you are importing, or yeah, yeah. So it's really important in Terraform that you create smaller and smaller root modules that do one thing, one thing really well, and that life cycle is disconnected from the others. It's optimizing for what we call like day two operations as opposed to like day zero, day one, where you're just bringing everything up. The cold start, I think, misleads a lot of developers getting started with this. This is controversial, possibly. Maybe some people are doing this. But like optimizing for the cold start is one problem that is different from optimizing from day two operations. And what makes cold start very easy can make day two operations very hard, vice versa. Uh, so, uh, so in this picture here, you, you'll have different tools, like for example, your foundational infrastructure, maybe you're a massive enterprise. This is you know, way outside your division. They're using AWS control tower. Cool, whatever floats their boat, not our choice. But that's one tool, that's one way to do the foundational infrastructure. But just because you're using that doesn't mean you have to continue using AWS like CloudFormation platform, you might be using uh, Terraform. So you, you could be terraforming everything at the platform layer. And for shared services, now maybe you're using Kubernetes for most of that. So you're using Argo CD for most of your continuous delivery there, for example. And then your applications. Well, now, okay, so this team, they like using CDK. This team uses serverless. This team uses, you know, straight up Kubernetes. There's a lot more tooling uh, maybe that's used at the final layer um, uh, for how your applications are deployed, depending on how they're written. Uh, for example, deploying your applications, you're probably using Circle CI, CodeFresh, GitHub Actions. But for foundational infrastructure and platform, you're probably using what we're calling now Tacos, uh, Terraform Automation Collaboration Software. This is like Terraform Cloud, Spacelift, uh, Scalar, and Zero. There are all these platforms out there that make Terraform uh, automation in a team environment hospitable. Okay. So to answer your question about this ECR thing, at a minimum, ECR should be out of phase with CI CD of your applications. Meaning that when you set up, uh, you're, you have a net new application, that application ultimately needs a artifact storage, in this case, maybe for Docker. Uh, so you provision an ECR for that. 
and you might totally tear down your application, but because you tear down your application, do you want to tear down every image you've previously built for that application? No, especially from a compliance standpoint, you're going to want that to persist. So that's why these two things are decoupled. And that means that the phase at which you deploy ECR is different. Then, well, yeah. Uh, uh, it's Michael here. Uh, so I got a question. Where you would put the, the ECR um, provisioning in, in these layers? So that would be, that would probably be therefore considered in this uh, structure as like in the shared services part. And so ECR exists, uh, you know, pre your applications getting deployed. Look, these things are all, can be updated all the time. It's just that like you don't tear down beyond one of these layers uh, at once, for example. Yeah, uh, that's I, would, I would maybe well, use yeah, a I different- say I agree with it. Uh, sorry, my bad, sorry to step over you. <laughs> no, that's cool. No, no, I was gonna say, yeah, in my case, there's um, layers. Kind of, I think we talked about it last week or week before the concept of, of stacks. So there's like, you know, VPC stack, non-prod and prod and then on top of that there's maybe like an ssl stack for certificates um and then on top of that there's you know ecr beside it the ecr stack and then on top of all that stuff sits the actual projects that write to the repositories but and those come and go but they don't um destroy the ecr repository when they go away the repository stays there yeah that that's uh congruent kind of Slightly different terminology than we use, but same, same uh, semantics. Uh, Andrew, what were you saying? I want to I'm going to reword Macon's question a little bit, and I think okay. uh, to to make it a little bit more clear. You have infrastructure that you need to create that is only for the application. Go back to your layer picture. Your your applicate you know your your backend API needs a database, and you're going to deploy RDS. Where does that Terraform code live? I, I would say it lives way up there still in layer four. Like it doesn't, you don't deploy an RDS database for your backend API up in the layer one or whatever. That doesn't make no, much sense. Exactly. Yeah, and, and it goes this, in my case, it goes the same for the ECR and the, <laughs> and the task definition because this uh, application on, only related service. So, we only have one ECR per service or per, per application. We don't use shared ones. So this, I think I think we mix a little bit the, your layers there. And it's it just also one of my frustrations working with ECS, just to say that like what I really love about Kubernetes is you can just very easily produce this YAML manifest with uh, that describes the architecture of your application and ship that together with your Docker image and voila, it's easy to deploy. While with ECS, everything is like moving infrastructure, moving mountains, and you got to whip out the Terraform just to deploy a new ECS task. And it does complicate application rollouts in my mind. And that's why I think people who use ECS very frequently are more concerned with just updating the Docker image and less concerned with how do we update the Docker image in phase with updating the ECS task configuration as well. Okay. Um, I think it's an interesting. I think it's an interesting thought experiment to, because uh, you know when it's when it's infrastructure, it, it's a little bit more cut and dried. But like in a Kubernetes world, I think it's interesting to think about like, does the ingress resource belong being deployed next to your application? Does the certificate resource belong being deployed next to your application? Are they? Or should they be separately life cycled too? Yeah, that, it does open up some of those questions. I don't think that I don't think there's a black and white. Uh, for us, we tend to deploy the ingress together with our apps um, because how well ingresses work in Kubernetes is just pretty awesome that an app can be responsible for its own routing. But maybe in a larger organization or a larger context, that's a big liability that an app can hijack a route. So then that needs to be more centrally controlled. Yeah, I think there's a people tend to give more responsibility to, the, to developers as they they know what they're doing and they should uh, be responsible for the application. And I and I've seen more and more people giving the permissions to deploy what they want on Kubernetes and take responsibility for that. Yeah, this goes also for monitoring as well because the infrastructure team is 
don't know the, the internals of the mo monitoring of the application. And if they can provide that the development team, then it's great, at least in my opinion. That's a good point, but I can counter, I can give you a counter argument that I cannot tell you the number of times I have discovered a development team with, you know, less DevOps Kubernetes chops, you know, than my DevSecOps team has that are putting an ingress in front of their Postgres database or, <laughs> you know, offering something with, you know, with uh, only HTTP, no certificate, no TLS or whatever, yeah. you know, doing things that are terribly bad practices because they just don't know. I think it has to be complemented with policies, uh, like programmatic policies, uh, and that's how you can scale it out, maybe. And those policies, yep. by the way, are up, up to you to write as an exercise because nobody's giving them away. Yep. Yeah, we, we, we try to do that with policies and uh, modules as well. So the developers can just use something that is pre-baked and with some best practices in that. Yeah. 